How's that? Good. So um, thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. It is wonderful to be back in Pakistan. As, as he mentioned, I served in Lahore from 2001 to 2003. I remember when this hotel opened. So I have a long history with Pakistan. It's a delight to be back and to be working on this portfolio, both with my American colleagues here at the mission and also um, with all of our Pakistani colleagues. To the U.S. Pakistan Women's Council members and friends, a very special welcome and thank you. And before I begin on the topic of today, I want to echo Ambassador Bloom's comments and express my condolences and support amid the devastating floods. There are so many lives that are at stake, so much has been lost, and I hope we can work together to really rebuild it during a difficult time. The Council, as you know, is a unique public-private partnership between the State Department and Texas A&M University that works closely with partners in Pakistan and the United States to promote women's economic empowerment in Pakistan. We deeply appreciate the support of our cooperating companies and organizations, which many of you represent, to advance our collective goal of enabling women to thrive in Pakistan's economy. And this year, not only are we celebrating 75 years of U.S.-Pakistan US diplomatic relations, but it's the 10-year anniversary of the Council. Over the past decade, we've built bridges between the people of our two countries to support Pakistan's sustained prosperity and positively impact the lives of thousands upon thousands of Pakistani women and girls. In recent years, we've continued the Council's positive work despite the challenging circumstances brought on by the global pandemic. For instance, through the Pakistan Million Women's Mentors Initiative, an effort to connect one million women and girls in Pakistan to mentors over the next few years, S&P Global, City, Procter & Gamble, Home Network, The Resource Group, KFC, Deloitte, and Zafa Pharmaceuticals have already pledged to mentor more than 40,000 women and girls in Pakistan. Through the Women's Business Opportunity Initiative, an effort of council members, We Connect International, the council is working to build inclusive value change in Pakistan, increasing the volume of corporate spending on goods and services produced by women entrepreneurs in Pakistan. And through the Future of Women in Energy Scholars Program, in partnership with Texas A&M, the Council is helping to support the next generation of women leaders in the energy sector through targeted training and networking opportunities. These are just a few of the myriad initiatives we've launched since 2019, reaching thousands of households in Pakistan thanks to our members, you. So why are we doing this? Why does women's economic advancement matter? Very, very basically speaking, the United States is committing to investing in Pakistan's future. Expanding the environment for business and job creation in Pakistan is going to benefit both of our countries through economic growth, trade, and mutual understanding. And we've supported these goals for years through a range of programs and initiatives, chief among them efforts like the Council that work to promote women's economic empowerment. We know in economic terms that the gains from investing in women and girls are immense. We don't have to look any further than our own backyard in the United States to understand the stakes, as an example. In the United States, over the course of the pandemic, more than three, William, three million women left the U.S. workforce. The dual burden of family care and work became too challenging to manage. And this is something, I think, that's similar to what we're going to see in the report that was just produced. This burden of care, the mental health burdens, it's not just a problem in Pakistan. This is something that has impacted the female workforce in the United States as well. Vice President Kamala Harris rightfully called the impact of women's departure from the economy a national emergency. So it's no surprise that the U.S. Federal Reserve highlighted women's workforce participation as a priority for our own economic recovery. The participation of women, particularly minority women, has been critical to U.S. economic growth since World War II. In the United States, the women's labor force participation has nearly doubled since 1950. Because of this, the United States economy grew by $2 trillion. When women joined the workforce, wages went up for everyone across the United States. And women's income accounts for the most recent increase in, fam increase in family income in recent decades. What does that mean for Pakistan? Well, here right now, women represent roughly half the population, and yet their workforce participation is among the lowest in the world at 20%. And according to the World Economic Forum's annual Global Gender Gap Index, anyone know where Pakistan ranks? Yes, yeah, second to last, exactly. Good, I'm glad this crowd knows that. 
So uh, Pakistan ranked 145 out of 146 countries on economic participation for women. And this basically means Pakistan is leaving money on the table, money for growth. There's so much untapped potential for economic growth and prosperity if we can bring more women into the workforce. We've seen, this is all gloomy news, we've seen that women's participation rate has doubled in Pakistan in the last two decades. So accelerating this progress and getting beyond 20% is going to be really essential. How do we do that? Focusing on priority areas like increased access to education, trainings, and support for women entrepreneurs. All of these are going to help increase gender parity in women's workforce participation. Basically put, women are Pakistan's most underutilized resource, and investment in the empowerment of women and girls could have an enormous upside with the potential for the transformation of Pakistan's economic growth and income inequality. This is going to be all the more important when you consider the macroeconomic challenges facing Pakistan even before the front floods, but now with the floods. I want to talk a little bit about the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on women, and this is something I think that the report lays out very nicely. Um, we have to recognize and respond to the past two years that revealed and exacerbated gender inequality in Pakistan and around the world. As the ambassador noted, the recent catastrophic flooding in Pakistan also highlighted that women and girls are among the most vulnerable groups during a humanitarian crisis. And yet the COVID-19 pandemic and its disproportionate impact on the lives of women and the girls we are trying to support cannot be overstated. Women in the world have dropped out of the workplace at a steeper rate, dropped out of the workforce at a steeper rate than men and make up the majority of those left jobless or who return to workforce at a lower pay level. Women and girls are facing increased levels of gender-based violence, including domestic violence during COVID-19, the severity of which has been labeled a shadow pandemic. In addition, burnout and mental health issues have been impacted um, around the world and in Pakistan. And I think that part of this report is going to be particularly important to pay attention to, the mental burden that comes and what is the drag on the economy when we're not addressing mental health issues. Again, not as all gloomy. We've helped women make incredible strides in the last couple of years. Women entrepreneurs in Pakistan were able to rapidly pivot to e-commerce and they reached new markets, something that uh, the data from Texas A&M may support. But business transactions online is a double-edged sword. When women entrepreneurs that don't have access to ICT or digital literacy are now at a greater risk of falling behind as more businesses move online which could exacerbate the, digi the gender div digital divide if we're not careful. So understanding the data and how COVID-19 impacted women and girls is critical to identifying gains worth leveraging for further success while honing in on the unique challenges imposed by the pandemic that prevent women from fully contributing to Pakistan's continued growth, development, and prosperity. So now to the main course, the Future of Women in Work Initiative. We are so thrilled to be a part of the Council's Women in Work Initiative with anchor partner Texas A&M University, council member S&P Global, and the U.S. Pakistan Business Council. And to have this, this report where they collected and analyzed the data on the impact is going to be very formative. Um, as you heard from Mr. Zahur, this is going to be serving the, as the basis for a national conversation the Council and S&P Global intend to catalyze to figure out how we use the information that we have to, again, reach into this untapped potential that is going to be critical to Pakistan's economic recovery. The initiative's prioritization of data-driven decision-making speaks to a broader objective of the Biden administration's commitment to evidence-based policymaking and to the empowerment of women and girls at home and abroad. The administration has launched, launched the Equitable Data Working Group in 2021 to improve the availability availability of data to advance equity. As we identify gaps and challenges to accelerating women's workforce participation and women's entrepreneurship and begin to shape the, the council's response, we look to all of you, council members and corporate champions for gender equality and, and, and uh, equity, to inform the conversation and highlight solutions that your company or organization may implement internally or that may be implemented more broadly across, across Pakistan. I'm also particularly heartened that this is a very diverse, diverse group here in terms of gender. Men need to be a part of the, the solution to get women back into the workforce and to see leaders, male leaders here who can make a difference not only as leaders in their organizations, 
that are in their own homes and their social circles is going to be what we help what helps bring more women into the workforce at all levels. The council will work closely with corporations to advance dialogue on the challenges and solutions, and we're going to select one or two high-level priorities and then use them to catalyze corporate government and civil society commitments. And we hope that this initiative will create a foundation for greater collaboration and exchange between the U.S. and Pakistan on women's economic advancement. Closing, I want to thank you for being with us this evening. On behalf of the United States, we appreciate your commitment and support to improving the lives of women and girls in Pakistan. And we look forward to many more years of collaboration and cooperation. Thank you.